Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the solution to the problem that I gave you in the last video, which is where you had to find the count of the consistent selling products in the last three weeks. Let's start. I'm in Power BI and this is where I have created some very basic setup to be able to solve this problem. The first thing is that I have been able to create a calendar table. In the calendar table, I do have a week column, I do have a year column and a couple of other columns along with the date column. Now, obviously the date column gets linked with my sales table using a one to many relationship. Apart from that, I have also made a very simple pivot table, which is where I have the year and the week number. Alongside this Power BI, I also have an Excel file open, which is where I have done a bunch of rough work to be able to help you you understand the building blocks of solving this particular problem. I'm in this Excel file, which is where I have created a bunch of rough pivot tables just to help you understand the process of solving this problem. The first thing to understand is that I would only be able to start to do this calculation week three onwards, because once you're working in week two, you don't really have a three week period to look at. Now, the second thing to understand is that against every single week, which is week three and onwards, I would, I should be able to take a look at three individual list of products. The first list of products is going to belong to the current week, which is the week that you're working in. The second list of products is going to be the week prior. And the third list of products is going to be two weeks prior. Once I'm able to create these three lists, I just have to compare the common products between the three lists and make a count of them. And then I have actually solved the problem. In DAX, we're also going to follow the same approach. First, we'll actually find out the three lists. So the current week list, the previous week list, and the previous to previous week list. And once I'm able to find these three lists of products, I will just find the common products, make a count of them, and we have solved the problem. Let's just jump over to Power BI and see how can we solve this problem. All right, let's just start to create a measure. So I'm just going to go over to my sales table and make a new measure. And I'm just going to call this measure as consistent selling products. All right, let's just first declare a variable. So I'm just going to call this variable as current week. And I'm just going to find the unique list of products. So let's just say values of the sales table product ID, close that bracket, press enter. Now what the values function is going to do is that in every single week, you can have uh, products sold multiple number of times. And I just want to see the unique products. And that's what exactly the values function does. It, pick, it will pick up this particular column, remove the duplicates, and will give you a table with single column that has the duplicates removed. All right, once we are actually here, I'm just gonna find out that do I have the right answer or not? So I'm just gonna say that. Now the values function actually returns you a table as an output. It doesn't, it doesn't really return you a single value as an output. That means in week three, if you have five products that you had sold, it's gonna actually return you five values in a table. I don't really wanna see a table here. I just wanna find out the count of the products to be able to validate the measure here. So I'm just gonna use the count rows function and I'm just gonna say count the number of rows that is being created by this particular table. So current week, close that bracket, press enter, and let's just drag this measure and see what do we get. If I drag this particular measure and we see that in week number one, we have two products, week number two, we have six products, and week number three, we have five products. It looks so far so good. This is also what we saw it in Excel. The answer seems to be right. Now, as of now, we have been able to create one single list, which is the list of products in the current week. Now let's just go ahead and create the list of products in the previous week, which is seven days prior. So I'm just going to open up this measure once again and create another variable. And I'm going to call this variable as previous week. And I'm going to use the same values function. But the problem is that this values function um, is going to be not value, it's actually values uh, is going to be for the previous week, not for the current week. So I would like to apply a filter on this particular values function and say that if you're trying to calculate for the current week, I don't really want that. I want this unique list of products, not for the current week, for the previous week. So I'm going to use the calculate table function and calculate table function. The first part asks you for what table are you trying to calculate? And the second part is what filter would you like to apply to this particular table? The filter that I'd like to apply to this particular table is a day filter. That means take the dates seven days prior. I'm going to use the dates between function. The date between function asks you for the first input as dates. Do we have a calendar date? Of course we have that. What is your start date? So my start date is seven days prior. So I'm just going to find the minimum calendar date. Uh, that means that in this particular week or whichever week that we are trying to work on, what is the smallest date? When does the week start? So once you find the smallest date, I take the date seven days prior. And then it asks you for an end date. I will say, hey, in the same way, find the largest date 
uh, of the week so whatever is the largest date of the week you take that date seven days prior that's it that completes my function now this is going to give you a list of dates which is seven days prior and for those list of dates which is seven days prior I will then be able to find the unique products now once I do that I close the bracket this is actually my previous week I will then now try to find out the count of the products in the previous week this again gives you a table by the way and you would not be able to run this measure unless you aggregate this measure so I'm just gonna use the previous week right here close that bracket press enter and let's just see what is the kind of output that we get now as of now you can see that in week number two we were uh, able to see six products in week number one we were able to see two products that means the two which is the count of the previous week should start to appear in week number two so if I commit to this formula and press enter you will see that I now get to see in week number two we have two products but this is not the current week's product this is the previous week's product now so far it seems right what we can do just do is go ahead and build our formula further and just find the previous two weeks now so I'm just gonna copy this entire tax measure and I'm just gonna say previous two weeks and the only change that I'm going to make to this measure is that say that now it's going to be past 14 days and I will just count the previous two week right here and press enter let's just see what we get press enter now if I just take a look at my output in week number three I'm getting two that means in week number one I had just two products so this seems right now as of now what we have been able to do is that we have been able to find out the list of the products for individual week for the current week for the previous week and previous two weeks now all that we want to do is find out the common products that were there in all the three weeks that is something that we can actually do it with an intersect function so I'm just going to use the intersect function and I'm going to say that the left table is going to be the current week and the right table is going to be the previous week now first you find the common products between the current week and the previous week it's again going to give you a list of table or a table that is, has the common products between the two weeks now once I have got this list I can just use an intersect once again and find out the common products between this particular two week period and the previous two week uh, that I had generated earlier now this will actually give me again a table as an output because multiple products that are common between the three weeks is going to give you a table and I don't really want a table I just want to find the count of the number of rows that are there in this particular table and that is exactly nothing but the count of the um, consistent selling products in the last three weeks if I commit to this formula press enter what do I get I get the count of the consistent selling products so take a look in week number three we just had one consistent product in week number four we had two consistent products so on and so forth there is a slight bit of problem right here the problem is that if I actually scroll down and I take a look at the total level of the year here this actually delivers me a number 12 I don't really want to take a look at the total because I'm not really calculating at the total level I would just want to be able to perform the calculation at the week level only so I need to add a little condition right here that this calculation should only happen once the week is filtered so I will write something like an if condition and I'm gonna see that hey why don't you check if the week is filtered or not so if the week is filtered then you actually go ahead and you perform this calculation otherwise not so just delete that part format that close the bracket press enter now if the week is filtered then you do this calculation if the week is not filtered then do not do this calculation this calculation will start to appear only at the week level from the year level and at the grand total level it will start to disappear and that was nothing but the count of the consistent selling products for the last three weeks all right, that was all about the solution to the consistent selling products problem. If you haven't really taken a look at the problem yet, I will leave a link to watch that video. Take a look at that video, understand the problem, and then come back and take a look at the solution. It will start to make more sense. And of course, a big shout out to everybody who participated in this DAX challenge and posted their right answers in the comments. And here is a little confetti blast and a little shout out to you guys. Thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, before I close, a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. If you're starting out and you need help with DAX or with Power Query to build up the fundamentals first and then move on to solving more challenging and sophisticated problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at the course. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.